Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is February 4th, 2015. Let's get straight into our news tonight. We've been talking a lot about vaccines over the past week. They've come out and attacked us here at InfoWars. They've attacked uh, Rand Paul and other people, these pundits, these talking heads, talking about how safe and effective these vaccines are, how they wish it was mandatory that Big Brother would come and just forcibly jab the needle in your arm, just like this picture you're seeing right behind me. But that's not uh, the full story about this, because we've seen many uh, harmful effects from vaccines. Now, we've seen, of course, the Bill Gates polio thing. You know, he vaccinates, uh, what is it, 40,000 people, crippled them. Also, we've seen that here in this country, uh, people having adverse reactions to these vaccines. Uh, Piers Morgan famously got injected, I believe, by Dr. Oz, Dr. Oz who doesn't vaccinate his own children. But Mr. Morgan takes the vaccine, falls ill a couple of days later, and blames what? The vaccine. But with all this in mind, you know, they still try to dismiss it. It's a conspiracy theory that you need to be concerned, that you need to be informed, that you need to read the insert, inserts that we've shown you here, right here on this desk. What was it yesterday? Alex was here showing the whole uh, vaccine insert, saying that it can cause diabetes, things such as that nature. But they don't want to talk about that. But now let's talk about this. Obama administration grants immunity to CDC scientists that fudge vaccine report. Whistleblower plans to testify before Congress. In 2004, Dr. William S. Thompson worked on a report for the CDC's National Immunization Program. That report, which ran in the Pediatrics Medical Journal, came to the conclusion that there's no link between vaccines and autism and that no racial group is more likely to be damaged by vaccines. But Thompson said that he and the other CDC scientists intentionally fudged the results, manipulating the pool of children they had to analyze. Yeah, so this is what it is. You know, they come out and now this guy has the immunity. He's being... Uh, uh, granted the access to just say, okay, well, it wasn't that big of a deal. Just go and testify and tell people what you did, and then we'll all sweep it under the rug. These are the type of reports that go on, the stuff they don't want you to know about. So we'll definitely watch this closely and see how these things develop. Now, from a shot in the arm to a shot on your constitutional rights, nobody likes to be discriminated against, whether that's racial, sexual, age discrimination. But what if somebody's comfort level interferes with your First Amendment? That's exactly what happened in the state of Oregon when a bakery shop refused to bake a cake for a gay couple. Though, let me clarify, a wedding cake. Let's take a look at the article. The owners of Sweet Cakes by Melissa in Gershom, Oregon, denied service to the same-sex couple because of their religious belief that homosexuality is a, quote, abomination unto the Lord, end quote. Action by the state of Oregon forced the business to close its doors in December. So they came to this uh, bakery shop, this uh, homosexual couple, saying, hey, we'd like to have a wedding cake. And then the bakery shop says, We'll bake you a birthday cake. If you have a graduation, some type of other celebration, we'd be happy to bake you a cake for that. So they weren't so much refusing them service. They just said, hey, because of our religious beliefs, our First Amendment right in the United States of America, we don't feel comfortable making you a wedding cake. And then a lawsuit came, and now the couple is being, or excuse me, the bakery shop is being forced to pay $150,000 in damages, which to me is a load of bull, you know, because they have their right, uh, I guess, in the state of Oregon to marry who they choose. This bakery shop should have the right to serve who they choose. So it's uh, definitely an attack on this uh, bakery shop's First Amendment, and hopefully this will get overturned and rejected. And something people are rejecting in the state of California, we've seen military police, but what about militarized ambulances? You know, I don't have a problem with the police keeping us safe, but I do have a problem with the militarization. I do see that people call it, as, call it intimidating, and to an extent it can be, and we would much rather come in a vehicle like that and have someone surrender without anybody getting injured than have to use some sort of other tactics where injury may occur. Again, the San Leandro City Council tonight voted to accept an armored vehicle, which is essentially a super armored ambulance. And to an extent, I can understand why they want this type of vehicle, you know, because I was in Ferguson, Missouri, when they were shooting at the firefighters. So I understand the need for them to be safe. And I really wouldn't even have a problem with the vehicle if it didn't have a gun turret or a gun turret mount and also places on the side where they could stick out weapons. If they had some different type of vehicle that still offered the armored plating but didn't have a way for offensive measures and they called it an ambulance, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But the thing about it is that I very much am concerned that they are going to use this for some type of police assault, not just for passively getting people out of hostile situations. So that very much does concern me. But something else that concerns me, this video. Violent cop arrested after handcuffing and choking child, causing brain damage. 
School surveillance cameras were rolling again on January 27th when, according to court records, Hardin placed another 13 year old in a chokehold, knocking him unconscious. Then authorities say Hardin handcuffed him rather than calling for medical assistance. A doctor who later examined the boy says he, quote, lost blood flow to the brain, resulting in an injury to the brain. And I hate that this situation happened, but I'm very happy that the school took the steps. To relieve this officer of his duty, he is suspended without pay, and he is facing charges of assault, wanton endangerment, official misconduct, and false swearing. So good job to the school. You know, it's unfortunate that these incidents do happen with some of these officers in the street, but as long as they're dealt with, they see their day in court. You know, I, I don't blame all officers for that. This is this particular individual's uh, choice of actions, and he will face the consequences for that. But now we see that 11-year-old had some very strong actions that saved her life. The 11 year old was home alone when a vehicle entered the driveway. The individual knocked on all the doors and then forced entry into the residence. The child hid in a bedroom closet with a shotgun, police said. The 11 year old aimed the gun at the suspect, and the suspect fled from the residence, police said, adding that the child was not harmed during the incident. And these are the type of stories that we need to hear because, lo and behold, if the suspect had a gun and injured the child, or if the child had shot her foot off, you know, it'd be an international news scandal, another negative gun story, but because this young girl armed herself, there's a video that you can watch along with the article, and it says that her father was an avid hunter, uh, taught the little girl how to use firearms, she was competent in the firearms, and thus was able to defend herself when nobody was around to protect her. And this is why you need a second amendment. This is why you need to have, or should have the option to have firearms in your house because you won't always be there to protect your children. Because I'll show you the stories, you know, the little girl shoots the gun instructor with the Uzi, and those are horrible stories. But you also have positive stories like this, like the 12-year-old girl in Oklahoma, I believe back in 2012, who was home alone, shot the intruder through the door. The boy in Houston, 15 years old, shot the guys breaking into his house. They don't want to tell you about that. But these are the types of stories that you need to know about. And finally, we'll end tonight with this before we go into more special reports. Columbine lawmaker pushing for guns in schools. State Rep. Patrick Nevelle, a Republican from Castle Rock, Colorado, on Monday introduced gun legislation that would allow teachers with concealed weapons permits to carry firearms in Colorado public schools. Neville, who graduated from Columbine High School, was there on that day of the shooting in 1999, believes that arming teachers is the best way to protect the students. And I do agree, because we've seen previously reports, uh, they said, hey, if your kid bring a, a can of Campbell's soup, so if the intruder comes in, you can throw that at him. And I do apply the school for at least having the kids to fight back and not just be there just to be targets. But, you know, you need something a little stronger than this. You know, say, well, if something happens, you'll call the cops. Well, you know, the cops are going to be busy with other situations. Even if they do arrive in the school, a school is a pretty big building, a lot of places for the assailant to hide. So I think, you know, you have a principal armed, you have a janitor armed, and maybe in this case in Colorado, you have the teachers armed. So if an incident does happen, you do have people there who can handle the situations. Like we talked to the guys in uh, northern Texas. They said, hey, at our school, our teachers, they have to certify, they have to go shoot X number of rounds every month. You know, we use frangible ammunition, all these measures to protect the students from any unwanted backlash from, a, you know, a, a firearm discharge, keeping bullets from going into walls and through walls and other situations. So that's it for this segment of the InfoWars Nightly News. But stay tuned. Coming up after this break, we have some special reports. David Knight's going to be telling you about the new shenanigans being brought on by the NSA. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Stay tuned. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. 
Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, last week I made a video about an article that I saw in USA Today titled Anti-Vaxxers Should Be Thrown in Jail. Um, yeah, someone actually wrote an article called that, and that guy's name is Alex Beerzow. What about that legal well, argument that parents need to know that vaccines can be risky, they can result in deaths, as the HHS numbers show, and parents are not told that by their pediatricians? Well, the, the numbers are very, 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 very small. I challenge that man in my video to debate us here at InfoWars because he says he has mountains of data that prove that the vaccines are safe and effective and that they work. The thing is, though, is he's blocked me on everything in social media. He refuses to come here and debate us. That mountain of data that you have, sir, is diminishing quickly, and I don't think you have any proof that vaccines are safe because that's why you're running from us. Come on. Come on. Come out here. Or we can do it on Skype. Debate us. I want to see this mountain of proof that you have. If we should be thrown in jail, give me proof that these things work. Yeah. Show us that we're a bunch of crazy conspiracy nut jobs. Come on. What do you got to lose? So far, your manhood because you're a coward. But uh, you know, if you come to InfoWars.com, we're gonna crush lies because that's what we do here. We're not a bunch of sock puppets with some random person's hand sticking up as moving our mouths, telling us what to say and write. We don't use teleprompters like Greg Gutfeld does, whatever the hell his name is from Fox News. We do real reporting, we do real research, and we bring people facts. You said you have facts, bring them here. Debate us, I'm calling you out again. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their body.
bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week, I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. There's a very interesting video that got posted by Washington and Lee University over the weekend. Michael Hayden, who has been at the top of the intelligence community as the surveillance state of the 21st century has been put into place. He was someone who began as the NSA director around the time of 9-11, shortly prior to that. He then moved on to director of national intelligence, then on to the CIA. He's pretty unapologetic about how he's broken the law. And he made some amazing statements at this law symposium. I'm not a law enforcement officer. I don't suspect anybody. He's not law enforcement. He doesn't have any suspects. So I guess that would be why he doesn't go before a judge and get a search warrant. Now remember that in 2006, Michael Hayden told some reporters that the term probable cause is not in the Fourth Amendment. Well, it certainly is in the Fourth Amendment. Of course, it is a right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects. See, that's a right of the people. These are rights that we possess, whether or not there's a Constitution or a Fourth Amendment. And the reason that we have the Fourth Amendment is because it puts prohibitions on people like Michael Hayden, who think that they don't have or should not have any kind of controls on their actions. They should go before a judge and say that they have a reason to search for the person, and they should be very specific about it. But he's turned this upside down. Instead of going to a judge and getting a search warrant saying, this is what I'm looking for, he does a dragnet surveillance of everyone about everything. Here's what else he had to say. This is not about guilt. In fact, in fact, let, let, me, let, me, let me be really clear, okay? NSA doesn't just listen to bad people. NSA listens to interesting people. People... <laughs> Isn't that funny? He doesn't listen to bad people. He listens to interesting people. Ha ha. Who does he find interesting? Is it the political opponents of his boss? Is it somebody that would rein in the surveillance state? Maybe it's somebody that he'd like to blackmail. Maybe it's someone that would give him some information about insider trading on financial uh, markets. Maybe it's corporate secrets from another country. Maybe he's just some kind of a perverted voyeur. Whatever. He doesn't believe that there's any restraints on him. And what you need to understand is that the lie that we're giving up our freedoms so they can protect us from the bad guys is just that. It's a lie. He doesn't care about bad people. He cares about interesting people. Maybe he'll take an interest in you. Let's listen to what he said about Section 215. A lot of commentary was made about Jim Clapper and the question from Juan Wyden on, the, on that, you know, about mass bulk collection and so on. Jim's answer was horrible. All right, and Jim's, Jim's an honest guy. He, he, just, he just hosed it horribly. Yeah, he lied. Let's continue. <laughs> he hosed it because he flat out lied under oath. But of course, if you're part of the intelligence community, you won't go to jail for lying under oath. Jim's answer was not as bad as Ron Wyden's question. Oh, it's the question that's the problem. I don't really know what a dossier is in this context. So what I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Everyone on that dais knew the correct answer to that question. Everyone behind everyone on that dais, the staffers, knew the answer to that question. They all knew the 215 program. Ron Wyden was trying to trick Jim Clapper into making an admission of classified information that Ron Wyden didn't have the courage to make himself. Okay, so he says that 
all the senators, all their staffers knew that the 215 program was being abused. And I agree with him. Rod Wyden should have come out and said it. But I think it's a bit more interesting to hear the head of the NSA lie to Congress, lie to the American people. The whole program is a lie. The way that they're using the 215 section that they were given under the Patriot Act, even if that were constitutional, they're still exceeding their authority because that was supposed to be going after people that essentially you could get a search warrant for, although you didn't have to go before a real judge, you just had to go before the FISA judge. But listen to what else he has to say. Why was Wyden trying to get Clapper to say what he was saying? Because Wyden, in the committee, was losing the vote on 215 consistently 15 to 2. So you put those two clips together and you understand that all the senators knew what was going on that were in the Senate Intelligence Committee. They knew that 215 was being abused, that they were going beyond their legal authority, which went beyond their constitutional authority. Their staffers knew. And Ron Wyden could not get them to do the right thing. 15 to 2, they were going to allow this continued abuse by the intelligence community. That's what he's saying. He's really making a case for how corrupt the Senate is. And it's gotten even worse. Ron Wyden is no longer there. And now we have Senator Burr from North Carolina who says he doesn't think there should be any public oversight of anything the intelligence community does. Listen to this last clip here. Oh, your talk today about 215? 215 is such a safe haven. 215 is legislated by Congress. I was doing metadata collection under the president's raw Article II authorities from October 7th, 2001 forward. Catch that? Look at the smug expression on his face. He's so happy. He didn't need any 215. I don't need no stinking law. I'm a law unto myself. I take orders directly from the president. Or maybe he gives orders directly to the president. Who knows? They do whatever they wish. He doesn't need the 215. He doesn't need a law from Congress. He doesn't need the Patriot Act. And he could care less about the Constitution. Listen to what else he has to say. The 215 program doesn't begin with the Patriot Act. It begins with the private order I got from President Bush. And we decided it was lawful and consistent with the president's authorities as commander in chief. Yeah, we decided what the law is. They did it in secret. And of course, you're not going to be allowed to know anything that he does because that would hurt his effectiveness. To look at people who are interesting, not people who are bad guys. Tell us what you think in the comments below. I think this is an outrage personally. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. <laughs> Well, that's it for our show tonight, but be sure to stop by prisonplanet.tv and get the limited time $29.95 offer. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and of course, the Alex Jones Show. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. Do you want to kill Nazis? I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. I believe Captain America was a composite character that really kind of captured the essence of that generation.
There's another analogy to be taken from Captain America, and that is that that generation and America in general has essentially fallen asleep like Captain America did, as you see him wake up in the second Captain America movie to find that he's living in an authoritarian police state. For a second day in a row, a group of World War II vets literally took down a barrier blocking off the World War II memorial in Washington, D.C. Harry needs his barricades back! Well, he seemed pretty chipper for someone who just found out they died for nothing. Wow. I go protect Iraqis in Iraq, and I come back and I find that my fellow Americans are being attacked by police. Why are they I'm well aware of the danger. I've spent eight years in combat. For once, we're way ahead of the curve. By holding a gun to everyone on Earth and calling it protection. The police and National Guard going street by street house to house, and instructions to disarm anyone inside. We're going to neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. But the punishment usually came after the crime. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. get a lawyer. You're an enemy combatant. You guys did some nasty stuff. Yeah. We compromised, sometimes in ways that made us not sleep so well. Well, when I was in Afghanistan, they usually kept us outside these buildings, and the other government agency guys, probably like DEA, CIA, and all of that, they would go into these kind of rooms like that, exactly, and they would be uh, torturing people from in there. Horrible scream to hear a grown person like that go being tortured. And you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. We provide them security, we're providing them resources, and we're providing them alternatives. Captain America is a fugitive from S.H.I.E.L.D. With all due respect, if S.H.I.E.L.D. is conducting a manhunt for Captain America, we deserve to know why. You have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. This is only going to get worse once it starts. And again, there's no veterans doing anything right now. No IEDs. They are literally getting the police to pick a fight with veterans. You are standing in my brain. How did you get here? In fight attack. Operation Paperclip after World War II, S.H.I.E.L.D. recruited German scientists with strategic value. They thought I could help their cause. Operation Paperclip explores the secret military program that hired scientists who used slave labor to build the V-2 rocket and others who used concentration camp victims for human experiments. The responsibility for the staggering loss of life and property is uniformly placed on Hitler and the Nazis, but excluded from the official history is the fact that Hitler and the National Socialists would not have risen to power without the help of international bankers and American and German corporations. She's disabling security protocols and dumping all the secrets onto the internet. Including Hydras. And Shields. What about Bradley Manning? Yeah. What about Bradley yeah, Manning? Yeah, what about all those people he Look at all those people he betrayed. I think the revelations are terrible because they were, they were revealed. Um, what's his name? Um, Snowden. Yeah, Snowden. Uh, I think he's a traitor. What about the others? Are you planning a rescue mission? You think about what is going on with the Veterans Administration, the hospital, and the fact that we have veterans that are dying because they're on a wait list. You talk about Sergeant Tamarisi and his situation. When you come to your new cat, personal! that I've been upset about and raised and cane about, and so I'm going to ask you about it. And that's this uh, right-wing extremism report that uh, was mailed out to law, all law enforcement officials in the United States. Uh, I've apologized for that report. Uh, it was not authorized to be distributed. This isn't freedom. This is fear. S.H.I.E.L.D. takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. It's getting damn near past time for you to get with that program, Captain. Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty, it's Alex Jones.